Well, today, like I said, we have a few guests in the place, and um, we are having some problems here right now. What is going on here? Okay, there we go. Now it works. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm a little out of it today. I apologize. Um, so, first on our list of topics, QB over here clearly means quarterback, so that is a hint that he plays football. And has been since like the, he's been out of the womb, so <laughs> it's something that's second nature to him. It's almost like breathing. So we're gonna discuss Tom Brady and his suspension and how it has been dropped. How do you feel about that, QB? Okay, there's a lot of things to talk about here. There's a lot of things to talk about here. Number one is where it all starts with the deflated footballs. With the deflated footballs, every quarterback does it. I do it. Aaron Rodgers does it. Tom Brady does it. Any quarterback has a specific way that they want their football. So if the ball's a little bit deflated, I know regulation is 11 to 13 ounces of air. If it's at 10.6, so be it. It doesn't make a difference, okay? It doesn't make a difference to the point where the, the deflated balls that were used in the first half of the Indianapolis Colts New England Patriots game, there were actually less points scored by the Patriots than in the second half. So in the second half, when the Patriots were using the Colts' balls, they scored more points, which means the, the deflated balls don't make a difference. Now, when it comes to his being suspended, that's that's a power move by Goodell because it was actually there was absolutely no proof that Tom Brady knowingly deflated balls or had any intention of deflating balls. So all that the NFL as a league, NFL as a as an organization knew was that the ball boys deflated balls and that rules were broken. So suspending Tom Brady. There was no, th there was no, there was no power to actually do that, and that's why the judge, uh, Judge Berman, overturned that. Now, with Tom Brady coming back, with Tom Brady coming back playing against the P Pittsburgh Steelers last night, he was 25 for 32, 288 yards and four touchdowns. He's making a statement right now. He's doing everything he can to show the league that they were, that that they were way out of line in suspending him, and that he's obviously and not arguably the best quarterback today. Okay, well, when I heard this argument a couple of days ago, I was deeply saddened because I am a Jets fan, and QB over here is an avid Jets fan. I am I am the biggest Jet fan you'll meet. Biggest Jet fan you'll meet. Yeah, so when I heard that he was pro Tom Brady playing, I honestly was a little heartbroken. I was like, why would you do that to yourself? But I mean, either way, the four-game suspension wouldn't have affected the Jets Patriots because we play week five, right. I think it is. We play uh, week five or six. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. So we would have just missed it. But like, still, like that been four games without Brady, that probably possibly would have been four losses right there. Right, I if agree. You think about it. I agree. Jimmy Garoppolo, who's a good quarterback, but he was a he was a uh, I believe a fifth-round draft pick out of Eastern Carolina. Okay, so that's a small program. He was going to be the the quarterback for Bill Belichick. There was no way they were winning more than one of those games. But as a Jets fan, yeah, maybe I want to see the Patriots lose games. But as a football fan, and even more importantly as a quarterback fan, I want to see the best players on the field. I want to see the best guys do what they do. So having Tom Brady, it's good for me, it's good for football, it's good for fans all around. I'm just anti-Tom Brady, so I'm not going <laughs> to delve into that. Uh, I will admit, though, that he does have quite a bit of skill, but I'm just anti-Tom Brady. He's the best, man. Four Super Bowls, you can't beat it. You can't beat Still it. Still anti-Tom Brady. Okay. Go so, whatevs. Whatevs, QB. <laughs> okay. So now, on the topic of Jets, what you got for us? New York Jets football. It's going to be an interesting year. We had a lot of pickups this uh, this free agency. We picked up a lot on the defensive side. We, um, you know, we went back after Darrell Reeves and Antonio Cromartie. You know, that one-two punch was huge for us in 09, 09, uh, 09 and 2010 season. Did you almost the, say 010? I did. I almost said 010. I caught that. Okay. I mean, it's not wrong. This is 2010. So... <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, so no, they were huge for us in the secondary. You know, they they would shut down every every possible receiver in the league, leading us all the way up to the AFC Championships two years running. Right. So you know, we traded we traded for draft picks to the Buccaneers. Revis, we get him back now in free agency. We get Cromartie back from free agency, along with you know firing Rex Ryan and getting Todd Bowles is huge because Todd Bowles, who was the defensive coordinator for Arizona, put Antonio Cromartie back on the map with six interceptions last season. Along with that, um, on the offensive side, we've made some trades. We uh, we traded for Zach Stacy, running back, who you know bolsters our running back in game. Along with a pickup on Stephen Ridley uh, from New England Patriots, we picked up Brandon Marshall. Or sorry, we traded for for Brandon Marshall from the Bears, who is still to this day a top ten wide receiver in the league right now. Um, to 
to add to our passing game. You know, uh, opposite side, Eric Decker is going to be huge. Geno Smith out is actually good for the team. I don't know if anybody knows that. I don't know if it's good for the team at a locker room standpoint because obviously there's something going on there that should not be going on there. I don't condone sucker punches, but as a as a football team, on the quarterback, Geno Smith is just not the guy. He is not the guy that's going to get it done. Ryan Fitzpatrick, who had his best year in 2012, or sorry, 2011, statistically, he threw for 3,800 yards and 24 touchdowns with Chan Gailey, who is our brand new offensive coordinator. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is better for this team. I think the New York Jets are going to go far. I think they'll go. If if I had to make a prediction now, I would say nine and seven and make the wild card advance all the way through to the AFC Championship. Sounds good to me. Um. First of all, before we continue on, um, I want to get this thought out there before I forget, but a friend of mine who is ironic, well, not ironically, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, I'm sorry, um, a friend of mine who happens to be a Dolphins fan was um, telling me his opinions about the Jets, and he was saying that Brandon Marshall was not a great move, and that Ryan Fitzpatrick is not going to be a great, uh, great starter for as our QB due to his um, record, which makes him the second worst QB in uh, football history based on his wins and losses count. So, I mean, I don't really know personally. I kind of I like Fitzpatrick better than Smith. I like him better than Sanchez. But um, don't say that. Jan- Mark Sanchez was the man. I don't he, no, he it. was the man back in the day. <laughs> back in like was it like 2010, Ten. 2011? Yep. Look, he took that was those were good years. Those were good two, years. Two, two the, the 2011 was the year that Super Bowls on my on my birthday, but That's they lost. Well. And That's Green Bay won. Awesome. And Green Bay won. I was very happy. So I wanted Green Bay to win that year. <laughs> because, well, obviously I wanted the Jets to win, but like when the Jets Once they were out. Yeah, when the Jets were out, I, I was like Green Bay's got to win. And Green Bay won, and I was like, yeah, birthday, woo! And then the is next that, year, yeah, I kind of did. I kind of celebrated a lot to be honest. I can see it. Yeah. I do a lot of dancing, if you guys see from the show, from uh, the Ustream. So, yeah, I like to dance. Um, so, your opinion on Brandon Marshall, what, what you got? The thing about Brandon Marshall is, you know, he's he's played for one, two, three teams before this. This is the this is the fourth team that, that Brandon Marshall has been on. He played for the Broncos, he played for the Dolphins, he played for the Bears, and now he's here in New York. Now, what, what your friend was saying as a Dolphins fan is absolutely right. He was a troubled... He was a troubled character. He was a he was a star athlete, star player who didn't get along with people in Miami. Now I don't know if that was I don't know if that was a, a personal issue with he had with certain guys, or it was the lifestyle, small market, that kind of thing. I'm not sure, but I know that from what I've heard him from from interviews that I've watched, uh, things that I've been reading, he likes New York. People like him in New York. That locker room, that locker room is not doing good at the quarterback position. But Brandon Marshall is is quiet. He's not actually having any issues right now. So that's a good thing. Okay, silent in, in the locker room. Good things. Good things be coming. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to take a slight little break. So we're going to hit you with some music. And then we'll be right back with some baseball. My favorite part of the day, as you all know. So we will be right back. <laughs> 